A web scene allows you to visualize and analyze geographic information in an interactive 3D environment. We could use ArcGIS Pro to author and publish scenes. However, we can also author and view scenes using Scene Viewer, a built-in component of ArcGIS Online. We can start by creating a new web scene and giving it a title, tags, and summary. This will automatically create a global web scene. A global web scene renders 3D content on a spherical globe, whilst local web scenes create a flat space view. Your choice will depend on what type of data you're using and what the spatial extents of your data are. We're going to start from an existing scene, one that shows a development site. We already have some before and after slides of what the development site is going to look like, and we want to add LiDAR data from a drone. Every two weeks, a new LiDAR data set will be flown, and we'll update the web scene so that we can use it to build a web app, which allows stakeholders to see how the project is progressing. Searching for Leon LiDAR, we can find our various point cloud scene layers, and we can add the site LiDAR to the scene. Now by default, point cloud data is symbolized by elevation, but we're going to look at different ways in which we can style LiDAR a little later. We also have another LiDAR data set which has been shared by someone in our organization, so we'll add that to and rename the layers to something a little more intuitive. Next up, we can now style our point cloud scene layers with Scene Viewer. It has an intuitive UI and interactive drawing options, including point color and point size. The available drawing styles allow you to visualize and analyze your point cloud data as true color or RGB, as classes, elevation, or intensity directly on the web. These styles leverage the data and attributes included in the last data set, so Scene Viewer will provide point cloud symbology options that match the data set properties. Now, our point cloud data contains classification, but not RGB data, so we note that the true color option is not available to us. We can explore other options such as class, elevation, and intensity. With the class symbology, we can assign a specific color to the classes in the point cloud scene layer defined within the collection process. This allows us to distinguish between elements in the cloud, such as rooftops and buildings, ground and low and high vegetation. If we open the class style, we can see what classes are available by looking at the list. These will also be available in the legend. If we turn on the modulate using intensity option, we can shade the color of the points based on the intensity value, which, by the way, is also available for use in styling. This improves depth perception and perspective of the point cloud scene layer when groups of points close together have the same color. Now, by adding this option and modifying the class colors, we can see much more detail, such as the roads and roof structures. You can change the size of the points by using the slider, determining which size looks best for our processes. Larger points let us visualize a more solid-looking point cloud, whereas smaller points allow us to see more of the other data in the scene through the point cloud scene layer. It's all up to us to determine what looks best for our particular web scene. In the same way, we can style the point cloud scene layer covering the whole of Lyon, except now we'll use elevation data instead of class data. We'll click on the elevation drawing style and switch on the layer. Now we can see over 740 million points symbolized by elevation, blue for lower elevation and red for higher elevation. Clicking the options button allows us to further change the style through the slider. The slider lets us change the elevation values that are used for the color ramp. Moving the sliders closer together gives us a better representation of the point cloud scene layer on lower elevation terrain. And this can be especially useful if you have quite a large range in elevation within your scene, such as we do here. 
we could also change the color ramp or switch on the modulate using intensity option. All of these options give us, or the people using our web scenes, the ability to quickly and easily visualize a point cloud scene layer in a way that best suits us or them. Whether we want to focus on certain classes or structures above a certain height, or even finer details like road markings. So now that we've updated our web scene, we can update our slides as well. Since slides capture layer state as well as view position, in other words, whether the layers are turned on or off, we'll navigate to our existing slides and switch on the site LIDAR to make it visible. We'll update our slides, and if we need to, we can create some new ones. And then finally, we'll save our web scene as a new scene. And now we're ready to use it in a web app.